Deep Purple, the world's loudest band. Here's a video dedicated to their drum sound. Classic rock band Deep Purple was formed in London in 1968 and has undergone almost countless lineup changes ever since. The only constant member to date is drummer Ian Pace. From the very beginning, this man has shaped not only the sound of Deep Purple, but also made an enormous impact on rock and metal drumming as a whole. He also played a major role in earning the band the Guinness World Record title as the Globe's loudest band for a concert at the London Rainbow Theatre in 1972 during which the sound volume reached 117 decibels and three members of the audience fell unconscious. It was the year the band released their biggest hit, Smoke on the Water, from their sixth album, Machine Head. Take a listen. This classic song is actually based on a true story. When Deep Purple recorded an album in Switzerland in December of 1971, Frank Zappa played in the nearby Montreux Casino. The building caught fire after a fan fired a shot from a flare gun and burned down. The song's lyrics talk about the event and the smoke on the water of Lake Geneva. But back to the drums. Back in the day, Ian Pace, like most rock drummers of his time, played Ludwig drums. To make his drums cut through the sound walls of guitar and organ, he generally plays large sizes. Today he is endorsed by Pearl, so we used our Pearl President Deluxe Kit. Since he's used kick drums from 22 up to 26 inch, we chose our 24 inch kick drum and put on a Remo coated ambassador batter and removed the reso head. The tuning is pretty low. Since the kick sound on Smoke on the Water is quite punchy with no sustain, Pascal threw in a big pillow for muffling. Here's how it sounds mixed. Ian Pace's signature snare drum is a steel model with a 14 by 6.5 inch shell, so we looked at our collection of snares and chose a 14 by 6.5 inch Pearl Sensitone. The batter head is a single ply Remo coated ambassador tuned to a medium pitch for a good mix of body and articulation. For muffling, Pascal installed a snare weight M1 muffling tool. And here's the sound. Back in the 70s, Ian Pace usually played 5-piece kits with one rack and two floor toms. Since the 1980s, his setup has expanded. He plays all standard tom sizes from 10 to 18 inches with his very characteristic 3-rack tom setup bringing in the 10-inch tom above the 12 and 13-inch ones. Since we don't have a 10-inch tom in the Pearl President Deluxe line, we used a 10-inch Masters tom. Above the 16 and 18-inch floor toms, Ian usually brings in a 14 and 15-inch tom. Since we have two 14-inch toms and no 15-inch model, we used those and put them on snare stands, tuning them to slightly different pitches. All toms have coated Remo Ambassador batter and the stock clear reso heads. The tuning is medium right in between the high jazz tuning and the low modern tuning. The resos are roughly a third higher than the batter heads. For muffling, Pascal added a vintage Sonor external muffler to the 10 inch tom. The remainder of the toms is muffled using the internal mufflers with the felts just slightly touching the heads and making sure that the decay of the toms matched one another. Here's how they sound. In terms of symbols, Ian has been a Pisces endorser since 1971. Before that, he mainly played Zildjian symbols. Because we have a large selection of Zildjian symbols, we used those. As a ride symbol, we chose a 22 inch K ride. From the Avidus line, we used a 15 inch hi hat as well as a 22 inch symbol as the ride crash. On the left is a 21 inch K sweet ride played as a crash. A 20 inch Oriental China trash completes the setup. Now for the miking. 
Because Deep Purple were using the Rolling Stones mobile recording studio, they had many recording channels to choose from and were able to set up lots of microphones for Ian Pace's kit. The 12, 13, 16 and 18 inch toms are mic'd with biodynamic M160s. These double ribbon microphones have a warm sound without too many high frequencies and were used by Deep Purple themselves. The two 14 inch toms have one M160 in between them. Since we only had one M160 left and used it on the hi-hat, we put a biodynamic TGD58 on the 10 inch tom. The snare is captured by a single Shure SM57 and the kick has a biodynamic TGI51. A modern bass drum mic would not provide enough mid frequencies. The overheads are two M90 Pro Xs in an AB configuration and mounted pretty high. For the room, we added a dynamic M201. With all of that in place, here's Pascal's version of Smoke on the Water. In 1973, singer Ian Gillen left the band and was replaced by David Coverdale. As a result of this and a few other lineup changes, the band's sound changed slightly as they approached the mid 70s. Let's listen to their song Burn from 1974. Ian Pace made some adjustments while keeping his main sound the same. The most noticeable change to his sound is the kick drum in Burn, which sounds more open than the one on Smoke on the Water, also having a longer decay. That's why Pascal put on the coated stock rezzle head of the kick drum, placing a pillow inside and installing a felt strip under the front head. The tuning is medium low. For this sound, we added a Sennheiser MD421 to the batter side of the drum and used the TGI51 from before on the rezzle side. This is our burn kick drum sound. The song Burn can be seen as a prototype of what would later become speed and power metal. Its driving guitar and fast drum fills are as characteristic as the high singing. So after a minor retuning of the snare and some adjustments to the mix, let's see if Pascal can keep up with Ian's pace.
Be sure to keep an eye out for the full drum covers, which will be on YouTube soon. Which of the two sounds do you like more? And what other drum sounds should we recreate in the future? Tell us in the comments. By the way, samples of both sounds you heard in this video will be available for purchase on shop.artofdrumming.com. Also, subscribe and hit that bell if you want to see more videos like this from us. See you next time!